wound about her ribs. The sun touched the peaks of the mountains, drawing a shining circle as a frontier of the valley when she climbed aboard the plane. She leaned back in the seat beside him and looked at Galt's face bent over her, as it had been bent when she had opened her eyes on the first morning. Then she closed her eyes and felt his hands tying the blindfold across her face. She heard the blast of the motor, not as sound, but as the shudder of an explosion inside her body, only it felt like a distant shudder, as if the person feeling it would have been hurt if she were not so far away. She did not know when the wheels left the ground or when the plane crossed the circle of the peaks. She lay still with the pounding beat of the motor as her only perception of space as if she were carried inside a current of sound that rocked once in a while. The sound came from his engine, from the control of his hands on the wheel. She held on to that. The rest was to be endured, not resisted. She lay still, her legs stretched forward, her hands on the arms of the seat with no sense of motion, not even her own to give her a sense of time, with no space, no sight, no future, with the night of closed eyelids under the pressure of the cloth and with the knowledge of his presence beside her as her single unchanging reality. They did not speak. Once, she said suddenly, Mr. Galt. Yes. No, nothing. I just wanted to know whether you were still there. I will always be there. She did not know for how many miles the memory of the sound of words seemed like a small landmark rolling away into the distance, then vanishing. Then there was nothing but the stillness of an indivisible present. She did not know whether a day had passed or an hour when she felt the downward plunging motion, which meant that they were about to land or to crash. The two possibilities seemed equal to her mind. She felt the jolt of the wheels against the ground as an oddly delayed sensation, as if some fraction of time had gone to make her believe it. She felt the running streak of jerky motion, then the jar of the stop and of silence then the touch of his hands on her hair, removing the blindfold. She saw a glaring sunlight, a stretch of scorched weeds going off into the sky with no mountains to stop it, a deserted highway, and the hazy outline of a town about a mile away. She glanced at her watch. Forty-seven minutes ago, she had still been in the valley. You'll find a Taggart station there, he said, pointing at the town, and you'll be able to take a train. She nodded as if she understood. He did not follow her as she descended to the ground. He leaned across the wheel toward the open door of the plane, and they looked at each other. She stood, her face raised to him, a faint wind stirring her hair, the straight line of her shoulders sculptured by the trim suit of a business executive amidst the flat immensity of an empty prairie. The movement of his hand pointed east, toward some invisible cities. Don't look for me out there, he said. You will not find me. Until you want me for what I am, and when you'll want me, I'll be the easiest man to find. She heard the sound of the door falling closed upon him. It seemed louder than the blast of the propeller that followed. She watched the run of the plane's wheels and the trail of weeds left flattened behind them. Then she saw a strip of sky between wheels and weeds. She looked around her. A reddish haze of heat hung over the shapes of the town in the distance, and the shapes seemed to sag under a rusty tinge. Above their roofs, she saw the remnant of a crumbled smokestack. She saw a dry yellow scrap rustling faintly in the weeds beside her. It was a piece of newspaper. She looked at these objects blankly, unable to make them real. She raised her eyes to the plane. She watched the spread of its wings grow smaller in the sky, draining away in its wake the sound of its motor. It kept rising, wings first, like a long silver cross. Then the curve of its motion went following the sky, dropping slowly closer to the earth. Then it seemed not to move any longer, but only to shrink. She watched it like a star in the process of extinction, while it shrank from cross to dot to a burning spark, which she was no longer certain of seeing. When she saw that the spread of the sky was strewn with such sparks all over, she knew that the plane was gone.